And I'm going to produce a list of problems here. And um, in a sense, in a sense, this is where everything we've all been talking talking about before gets into the nitty gritty. And I've written down six problems, and I'm sure we could get sixty or a hundred without much difficulty. But it will take a little while. I want my paper, article, or book to be accessible. I can't access this paper, article, or book. PDF does not support ARIA. LaTeX is hard to learn if you're blind. PDF is hard to preview if you're blind. And raw LaTeX is hard to read if you're blind. So all of these things have come up in with people I've spoken to. And that's why I've written them down, because they seem to cover the area reasonably well. Um, I open the floor. I, I just wanted to toss in a contribution on one of your points, Jonathan, about the difficulty of turning printed text back into computer readable text via optical character recognition. Uh, there have been assorted products on the market, notably from Adobe, Corel also had uh, an OCR package. And a number of years ago, uh, an effort was started at Hewlett Packard that moved on to Google. This is actually, it's called Tesseract, T-E-S-S-E-R-A-C-T. -S -S -E it is moving into GoScript, which is the freely accessible implementation of PostScript and PDF processing from artifacts. And uh, several months ago, probably last fall, there was a preliminary release of this, which some of us tried to implement and couldn't get going. And then two or three months later, a second release where we actually were able to get something that will do OCR, at least of, of uh, text in English. There are dictionaries in multiple languages, but we don't have information yet on how to tell the OCR engine how to switch dictionaries. Nevertheless, I think this is something that will come. Uh, I was requested by a colleague a couple of weeks ago to deal with a three or 400 year old manuscript uh, written in German Gothic script with mathematics in it. And, and he said, how can I get this into modern readable German text? And we had tried uh, the ghost script engine that I had working and we had tried uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader and neither were terribly successful. Then he switched to Abbey Fine Reader and it actually did quite a decent job of the Gothic script with probably about a 90 or 95% correct recognition of words. Uh, so I think that's, that's progress. So there is work going on uh, that will make the OCR process uh, easier for people, more accessible and more accurate. But it's still a fairly difficult problem when you consider that the market has more than 20,000 fonts um, and uh, book publishers probably use several hundred. So trying to get successful OCR or published materials isn't always an easy problem. Yeah, just to back up what you say, Nelson, uh, one of my colleagues produced uh, something based around fine reader for reading um, the, the records of the million or so specimens of Lapidoptera in the Natural History Museum in the UK. They were all handwritten and we were able, or he, he was able to make fine reader read most of the te handwritten text. It was actually very surprising that we could persuade it to do that and very impressive that it got so much of it right. Uh, of course, context played a part in that as well because you're talking about butterflies and and moths and how they appear so some of the failures of the ocr engine can be picked up by the way in which the the key, the key card is structured mm -hmm. but it's interesting that those things are progressing um well mm -hmm. In this context, I'd like to say something that also relates to the various varieties of Braille we've got. Uh, I might be inventing what I'm about to say, but um, 
Uh, I think there's a dialect of English called something like Chinese Business English, and that it's one of the larger dialects of English. Um, and certainly Pidgin English is quite a large dialect. Now, in aerospace, particularly relating to air traffic controllers and pilots and so forth, English is the standard common language. And I believe there's something like standard aerospace English, which is the controlled vocabulary. And the word that we write in English, C-L-O-S-E, can be pronounced two ways. You can close... three words if you take my friend into account. <laughs> you, you can close the cabin door or you can be close to the mountain. Now, in each case, you need to know which meaning is being used. And if your standard vocabulary doesn't use words ambiguously, it can be easier. So oil can mean a lubricant or it can mean to apply lubricant. And um, I think in terms of people who have to use English, and that includes technical documentation, if there's a standard vocabulary available which works and is used, that's much better for two purposes. The one is for reading for people who don't have English as a first language, and secondly, for machine translation into English, into, a, into other languages. The translator's job is much easier if the input language is so to speak less, is so to speak less poetic. Translating poetry is really hard. Uh, I'm going to pick up on one of my problems. LaTeX is hard to learn if you're blind. And depending on your habits, you can have different responses to that problem. You might be, oh, we need to improve the documentation. Or we need to adapt the screen reader. Or there's the denial. No, it's not difficult to learn. And there's another approach, which is to avoid it, which is to use marker. And having a range of responses available can help you choose the appropriate response to the situation that exists. I think everything is the best at something. You just have to optimize for the right thing and the solution you prefer pops out. Um, for PDF being hard to preview if you're blind, well, don't preview it in PDF. I've heard that twice now, independently from blind people. Preview it in HTML. Um, 